Um, I think parents should take their kids to church more often because kids need to learn about all the, re well, not all religions, but mostly Christ because that's the main person who's going to save us and who died for us. How y'all doing? And welcome to Loud Cry. Now, this episode, we're going to deal with something that the devil has tricked and deceived and manipulated the whole world into thinking something was one thing when it's really another. What is this you ask? It is sorcery. Now when I say the word sorcery, first thing that comes to mind is wizards and you know the hat and the spells that are thrown out. Beloved, what if sorcery in the Bible means something completely different than what we're being shown in the media world. You know, Revelation, I believe it's chapter 18, verse 23 says, for by sorcery was all nations deceived. All nations deceived. Now, do you think of, it was a little wizard casting spells and, you know, that's, is that what the Bible's talking about here? Beloved, what the Bible is actually talking about, the meaning of sorcery right there in the Greek means pharmakeia. Pharmakeia. And the word pharmakeia means anything that medicates the mind to keep you from doing the will of God. Now that word pharmakeia sounds familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, it's where we get the word pharmaceutical and pharmacy. Yeah. So God is saying it is by pharmakeia, things that medicate the mind, that all nations were deceived and are deceived. So this episode, we're going to take a look and actually see what medicates our minds. Beloved, can TV medicate your mind? Is that a form of pharmacia? Can, of course we know alcohol. Alcohol. Can that medicate your mind? How many different pharmaceuticals <laughs> actually exist in our world today? And are these pharmaceuticals set up to heal you? Or just to medicate your mind? Beloved, can another person medicate your mind? You ever heard of being love drunk? For by her sorceries were all nations deceived. Beloved, we're going to take a walk and we're going to look at and actually see. Not only are we being deceived, but we're being manipulated and lulled to sleep. We are living in the midst of a supernatural warfare. And through the medium of the New Age movement, Satan with his cunning sophistry has re-engineered the occult worship practices of ancient times and brought them into our modern day society. One of the main agents of this New Age movement was a woman by the name of Alice A. Bailey. Alice A. Bailey was the founder of the occult organization known as Lucis Trust. The original name of this organization was Lucifer's Publishing Company. The headquarters of this spiritualist organization is found within the United Nations, where it operates as a non-governmental organization. In the volumes of Alice Bailey's writings on the occult, she spoke much of the nations of our world developing a new world order and the importance of an organization known as the Freemasons for the success of this endeavor. In one of Alice A. Bailey's letters concerning her thoughts on Freemasonry, she wrote, the Masonic movement will meet the need of those who can and should wield power it is the custodian of the law, it is the home of the mysteries and seat of initiation. It holds in its symbolism the ritual of deity 
and the way of salvation is pictorially preserved in its works. The methods of deity are demonstrated in its temples, and under the all-seeing eye, the work can go forward. It is a far more occult organization than can be realized, and is intended to be the training school for the coming advanced occultists. Benjamin Krem, a man that is noted as the John the Baptist of the New Age movement, in his book The Reappearance of the Christ and the Masters of Wisdom, had these statements to make about Freemasonry. Benjamin Krem stated that millions of people, millions of us, will be initiated into the occult when they can purify and transform their occult symbols, numbers, and metaphors. Now, if I was you, ladies and gentlemen, I would be asking how do they propose to purify and transform these occult symbols, numbers, and metaphors? Because it is by this means that they are seeking to initiate millions of people in our day into the occult. This means they are trying to make millions of us knowledgeable of the way that they think. They are trying to indoctrinate us into their belief system. And they propose to do this by purifying and transforming their symbols, metaphors, and numbers. And according to their writings, this whole process of purifying and transforming these symbols, numbers, and metaphors is done through what they call externalization. What externalization simply is, is to take an idea that is abstract, a concept that is hard to be understood, and to break it down, make it simple, and also make it attractive, so that people will not only understand it, but they'll desire to have it. And that's what they're doing to us right now. It's like a mother feeding her child vegetables. They're mixing their belief system with something sweet and they're making it slide right down our throats. And we're asking for more of it. And by what means do you think that they are externalizing this belief system, this satanic belief system to the world? Well, in Alice A. Bailey's writings, she developed 10 stratagem by which the nations of our world could establish a new world order in which Lucifer would be acknowledged as sovereign. Two of those strategies were Strategy number eight, use mass media to influence mass opinion. Create mass opinion that is receptive to these values by using television, film, the press, etc. Strategy number nine, debase arts in all its forms. Corrupt music, painting, poetry, and every expression of the heart. Make it obscene, immoral, and occultic. Debase the arts in every way possible. Ladies and gentlemen, they are using mass media to shape mass opinion. They are using media, music, movies, video games, art, everything that they can get their hands on, the fashion industry, as a vehicle to promote to us their satanic belief system, and we're not even realizing what they're doing because they've broken it down, they simplified it, and they've made it attractive to us. And if you're still not understanding how this whole concept of using the media for this purpose works, here's an example. As you sit down in the comfort of your own home, watching the television, and a program comes on in which one of these occult symbols can be found, subliminally the human mind will record this symbol in the subconscious and associate it with whatever message was being conveyed by the program at that time. In this case the message is, money is security. Then turning the channel on your television, another program comes up with the same occult symbol. But this time the message being conveyed is, disobey God. This message as well will be associated in your mind with that same symbol and then changing the channel once again you view another program in which the same occult symbol can be found but this time the message being conveyed is have sex this message as well will be subliminally associated to or connected with that symbol in your mind 
So consequently, whenever you see that occult symbol, your subconscious will influence your conscious mind to think, have sex, disobey God, money is security, because the symbol that has been anchored in your mind now acts as a trigger to activate the subliminal messages that your mind has associated it with. And this massive assault against humanity to invade our conscious thought patterns via our subconscious for the purpose of molding our characters is a design that is being carried out by men, but it has been orchestrated and it is being supervised by Satan himself. For Satan is simply conveying his thoughts and his desires to the minds of his agents, which in turn use their power, their money, and their influence to push the devil's agenda. And all of this is for the purpose of leading millions of men and women, young and old, to either directly or indirectly pay homage to or give worship to the devil. My friend, I hope that your eyes are beginning to open and that you're perceiving what is going on right now. We are under the attack of this most subtle and seductive method of indoctrinating us with the doctrines of devils. And this whole conditioning process is for the purpose of accomplishing the design that is spoken of in the book of Revelation chapter 16 and verse 14. And that is to gather us to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. In other words, Satan is trying to initiate us into the ranks of his army so that we will be prepared in heart and mind to fight against God in the battle of Armageddon. And the most disturbing thing about this whole scenario is that the devil has stolen this method of educating from Jesus himself. Now you might be sitting on the edge of your seat and saying, what in the world is this man talking about? Well, I'll tell you exactly what I'm talking about. You see, when Jesus Christ walked upon the face of this earth, he spoke many parables. One of these parables were the sower and the seed. The sower was a symbol of the person that spread the word of God, the same way that a sower spread seed. And the seed, obviously, was a symbol of the word of God or the gospel of the kingdom. Why do you think Jesus would use a sower and a seed as symbols to present these most important principles of salvation? The reason why Jesus used these symbols was because they were common sights for those people that he was educating. And he knew that they would see these things frequently. It was his desire that as they saw sowers sowing seed over and over and over again, they would remember the principles of righteousness that he taught them and that one day these principles would transform their lives as they were recalled to their minds over and over and over again. And so Satan has taken this method that Jesus used to teach principles of righteousness and he is using this method now to teach us the doctrines of devils. Has it ever once puzzled you as to why all of a sudden these very curious symbols have become popular in our secular society? Like skulls and crossbones and eyes within pyramids. You can find them on business logos, on coffee mugs, on t-shirts, on baseball caps, on children's clothing, on undergarments. They are everywhere in our video games, in our favorite sitcoms, in cartoons, they are everywhere. And that is why now more than ever, we must separate ourselves from the things of this world. We must give up our worldly entertainment. We must give up our worldly fashions. We must give up our worldly music and give ourselves wholly to the service of God. For the Bible says all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life, they are not of the Father. They are of the world. 1 John 2 
and verse 16. And that is why the Bible counsels us in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 17 and 18. Come out from among them, and be ye separate, and touch not the unclean things, saith the Lord God. And I will receive you unto myself, and I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord of hosts. If we want to be children of God, if we want God to be our father, we must separate ourselves from these worldly things which the devil is trying to use to contaminate us. The Bible tells us in the book of 1 John chapter 3, starting at verse 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know this, when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in himself purifieth himself, even as he is pure. We are living in an age in which we need to purify our minds, our thoughts, and our desires, and the devil is trying to contaminate them, but if we separate ourselves from the things of this world, we can become pure so that we can meet Jesus face to face. For as the devil is purifying and transforming his demonic system of worship to be understandable and to be acceptable by humanity, we need to purify our minds so that we can be transformed into the image of Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans chapter 12, starting at verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be ye not conformed unto this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye might prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God is looking for you to give yourself wholly and completely to his service so that he can use your life to magnify his beautiful and amazing character in this world. And the only way we can do this is if we are not conformed to the principles of the devil of this world. I want to encourage you. It is time to give up the worldly music, the worldly videos, the worldly video games, the worldly dressing. It is time to separate yourselves from the things of this world and to unite yourself to Jesus Christ. He loves you so much that he wouldn't want to spend. How y'all doing and welcome back to Loud Cry. I'm Joshua White. David Reese. And today we're talking about the deception of sorceries. The deception of sorceries. You know, uh, like, we, like you, we spoke about earlier, a lot of times the devil wants us to think that sorceries, you, you picture uh, a wizard with the pot, you know, or with the, the staff, and he's casting all these spells. But really, as Revelation, is it 1823? 1823, yeah. 1823, as Revelation 1823 points out, is that sorceries is what Babylon uses to deceive the whole world. And the meaning of sorceries in the Greek and Hebrew means pharmakeia. Pharmakeia, like we've spoken about this whole episode, but I really want to stress this point because pharmakeia is the root word where we get pharmacy, pharmaceutical, pharmaceuticals, and it means anything that medicates the mind to keep you from doing the will of God. Anything that medicates the mind. Some examples of some things that medicate the mind. Well, well, there's plenty of things. I mean, there's the obvious, you know, right. prescription drugs and that type of thing, right. which just a cool uh, little fact to show that this scripture is true. Seventy percent of Americans are on at least one prescription mm. drug. So How many? Seventy percent. Seventy percent. a big number. You know, and half those are on more than one. Mm. So that that's definitely a medicated nation. Right. But but there's other things. You know, I mean, through uh, music. That's another one. Certain, yeah, certain beats release certain things in your brain and actually shut down parts of your brain. Right, right. Could TV be a medication? Something that medicates your mind, keep you intoxicated. You know, they say you've been watching TV so long that when you get up and go into another room, you feel dizzy. You know, like, you know, your eyes got to readjust. Yeah, like you were even hypnotized in a way. 
Oh, oh yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, television also has music. I mean, every mm-hmm. single television show, if you were to watch a scary horror movie and pause, or not pause, but mute it, <laughs> it wouldn't be scary anymore. A lot of the time, it would just right. be like, okay, this is real boring. Right. There's always music playing in the background, but like you said, you go into that state where you're just sitting there, you don't even really know what you're watching. And like you said, it's like being hypnotized. You know when you ask somebody, when they read that verse right there, you know, and you'd be like, okay, Babylon is gonna use sorcery to deceive the whole world. The majority of the time, people are like, oh, that ain't me, you know, I ain't gotta worry about it. I ain't got Magellan and spells and Harry Potter with the wand. I don't have those things. But it's so crucial to know what the sorcerers truly are. Because when, when you really look at it, and you take an honest look at your life, we all have a little bit of sorceries in our life somewhere. In some form or function, we're all influenced by some type of sorcery. Oh yeah, it, easily. And, and the thing is, when you're in that state of mind where you're not really paying attention to what you're watching, I know, or you're listening to your music and singing along, you're driving, you don't even know where you're driving. Sometimes, I, I mean, I've, I know I've done that before. Um, you don't really know what's coming into your brain. Mm. And, and then you can easily get, you know, false teachings, false, I, I call them little, the devil's seeds planted right. in you. But the thing is, a lot of this actually goes back to, you know, the like you said, the literal sorceries. Yeah. A lot of these beats in the music, mm-hmm. and a lot of the themes in these television shows go back to ancient pagan worship, right. ancient voodoo, right. and, and those actual sorceries. And, you know, and, 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 and those things were used to bring up demons, to, to call up demons, to call on the power of evil influences. Let's talk about the one part of sorceries. Uh, I, wanna, I gotta mention alcohol before we get mm-hmm. to it. Alcohol, and you know, there's so many different types of drugs. Like you say, from pharmaceutical to illegal drugs, which even on my way in tonight, I heard how certain countries are gonna make, uh, certain countries are gonna make marijuana legal, mm-hmm. you know, so now it's legalized more sorcery. You know, legalized more sorcery. But the, the part of the meaning of sorcery that's detrimental even is but it says anything that medicates the mind to keep you from doing the will of God. Now, a lot of Christians, a lot of Christians, they wonder why it's so hard to do God's will. Could it be because they have too many sorceries in their life and they don't realize? Oh yeah, I agree. Um, in Leviticus 10, real quick, and you just brought up a perfect point. Right. Leviticus chapter 10. Let me get there real fast. Talks about. Uh, a story about Nadab and Abihu, who had gotten drunk and got, they were trying to do the right thing for God. They, they were like, oh, excited for God, but they right, were right. like, because their minds were medicated, you could say, they were drunk, they weren't, you know, in the right state of mind, they brought profane fire before the Lord. And explain profane to the people. Profane is, it's inappropriate, not the right type. God had set forth a certain fire. He had actually sent fire down from heaven to burn up their sacrifice. And this was the fire they were to be using. But instead, they took their own fire in to the uh, tabernacle. Well, let's say it like this, even. God has one type of spirit, the Holy mm-hmm. Spirit. Could profane be a different type of spirit? Oh, evil spirit that even could be disguised as Holy Spirit. Oh. But because they were sorcery, because mm-hmm. they were intoxicated, you know, they thought that this evil spirit, this evil spirit became okay. Oh, and that's the key to this whole thing. This is how Babylon sees the whole world through her sorceries. Because it goes on and God says, you know, um, do not drink wine or strong drink, thou nor thy sons, when you go into the tabernacle. Why? He goes, lest ye die, um, down in verse 10 it says, and that ye may put difference between holy and unholy, between unclean and clean. And that that's the point. If, if you have a medicated mind, if you're under this sorcery, right. hypnosis, you won't be able to discern between what's right and what's, and what's wrong. wrong. Mm. And that's, that's, that's a great point. It's a great point because when you look at it, like I say, uh, I think the struggle for a lot of Christians is they want to live a holy life, live a sanctified life, but they find it so hard to. Mm-hmm. And because of there's so many sorceries in their life, because there's so many sorceries in their life they, uh, that they are not aware of, they find themselves going away from the will of God. Or not even wanting to serve the will of God, and they think something's wrong in themselves. They say, "Why do I have these intense cravings to, to be in the world and to do evil?" They could have too many sorceries yeah, in and, their life. And the way to overcome that is to fall in Christ. 
I mean, like you said, um, they want to be sanctified. Christ is what sanctifies us. And he has to, sanctify means to be set apart. So you got to be set apart from the world and these sorceries. So you got to follow in Christ, beg him, because sometimes we can't overcome these things. Most of the time we can't. So, so we got to follow in Christ and we got to separate ourselves from the world and continuously move so we are in the world, not of the world. I think you say it best right there, and as we sum it up, is the, the key is to separate, mm-hmm. to look with honest eyes, honest eyes into your life and see what has a hold on your life see what is medicating your mind even if you don't think something is medicating your mind try to go without it for three days and if it's a struggle to go without it then it could be a sorcery the whole plan hinges around god being human that's the, you know, supreme sacrifice. A supreme judge requires a supreme sacrifice. That concept, the way you put it right there. Okay. Uh, that's why he could not bring down a created being. He couldn't send an angel. He couldn't send a, uh, a superhuman being created just to be a sacrifice. I mean, he could have. But, but... But God is the only being that has been around long enough to validate giving man a break. Justification, it is a reckoning process. Okay. Right. It's a reckoning process. You know, so so um, that was the beauty of uh, the gift and the art of salvation and every aspect that he's done for mankind is, is to bring him to that understanding. Supreme sacrifice, a supreme judge. So there had to be both of them involved in restoring mankind. Heart with wonder and with every step.